Hello, uh, my name is Dale Pencala and I'm going to put together a quick little video here for people that have been asking me about how my collimation masks are used and the way I use them. When I take a scope in, in particular a, a refractor, I always go through that scope top to bottom. And one of the last things I like to do is check the collimation, uh, the alignment of the focuser to the central axis of the tube, and then of course the actual alignment of the objective lens in reference to the center line coming back to the eyepiece, or in, in this case it's going to be a, a, a laser. So I'm going to flip the uh, camera around and give you a quick um, rundown on the way I do things and I hope that this helps you. Video. This here is actually uh, a William Optics uh, 90 FD uh, mag res that I got in and I just went through the scope, cleaned it all up and I was just checking the collimation and this is how I decided to put a little video together for people that are interested in how I actually uh, go about checking collimation with my collimation masks that I make. So I start out right off the get-go and I use the mask on the front. Now I always recommend that the mask needs to be put on the lens cell. In this case, the Megrez, I don't have that option. I have to work to the actual dew shield. So some of that has to be taken into consideration. But the first thing that I do is I start out making sure using the reference lines all the way around the mask. And I call it the mask, but essentially it's a target is what it is. And I make sure that I use three uh, of these locating uh, studs, but some people like to use four, so I include four. But I use three, and this is the way I align it. And if you look carefully and you pay attention to the, con the concentricity of the white edge to the outer edge of my ring on the mask, you'll notice it's pretty doggone close. So that's what I work with. That's how I check it out. You can also work to the inside. It just kind of depends. You've got several different reference lines that you can work to. The ultimate goal is to make sure that the beam comes and hits dead center on your mask. So next thing I do is I come over here and I, I use um, a couple different tools. In this case, I'm not using the diagonal. I take the diagonal right out and I check the collimation right to the focuser. I have a, a uh, helical uh, adapter that I use and then my my single beam laser that I use is I use a tape it's it's a tape and I can't remember the name of the tape but uh, in the end the tape is used for taping together lens elements around the circumference of objectives before they put them in the lens cell and that's what I used and then I just fit my uh, laser collimator so that it fits good and snug into the collet. Mine's a helical, so that's more of a collet type. And then I make sure that's all good and snug, and then I put it all on the, uh, or in the uh, focuser. And that's where we're at right now. now I'm going to go ahead and shut the light off, so hopefully it'll be easier for everybody to see the laser when it comes through. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the laser on and you'll see on this end where that beam is. Now, in this case, on this particular one, we're talking maybe a 32nd of an inch off. But this is so doggone close that uh, I wouldn't even uh, worry about something like this. The next step is I check uh, and see where the return beam is. Now, in this case, I don't think you're going to see the return beam. The return beam for me is actually right there. It's slightly above the exit. Well, I guess you can actually see it now that I'm looking at the uh, 
at the video. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so you're you're approximately an eighth, not even quite an eighth of an inch off from the exit or entrance hole. So what would I say about that? I would say right now with the way this scope is, it is so doggone close that I'd have to say that you're only going to see this on high uh, magnification nights of good seeing where you maybe could pick that up in a star test. In this case, I can't honestly tell you that it's, uh, that it's off because unless I can honestly say that I'm locating on the lens cell, that would be the only way that I would say that it's definitely off. Now, for those people that have scopes that you can adjust the collimation screws, if you were comfortable enough with making an adjustment, and I would say before I would make an adjustment, say this particular scope was able to, to be adjusted, I would first star test it before I would even attempt to, to uh, actually collimate it. Reason being is right off the get-go, as I said, we're on, a, we're on the dew shield, not the actual lens cell. But it's close. I always, unless it's grossly out, would I never make an adjustment on the lens cell, only if it's grossly out, because there's so many different variables. This gives you a really good idea as to how, uh, how good your scope is. And one of the biggest things I've found over the years of working with refractors is the main thing is to get the, the focuser so that it's on center in the center of the axis of the telescope. Then once you are, uh, once you're as close as you can, if you can make the adjustments, then you're welcome to go ahead and do that. I just pref prefer myself before, is it, unless it's grossly out, um, I wouldn't mess around with the collimation. Uh, of the screws but if you're comfortable with it and you know based off of your experience with your particular scope and you know it's off on a star test and this situation here shows it for you then I would say at that point go ahead and make the adjustment but ultimately this is what I call a bench collimation uh, but ultimately you can't tell until you're under the stars. That's my own personal opinion. And I hope that uh, the tools that I've been able to share with the astronomical community helps you. And uh, if you have any questions, certainly let me know. And I would be happy to explain in more detail if I could. I hope this helps. Thanks.